The research report task is now available on Blackboard in the assessment section within the report folder. You will need to download both the task sheet and the Excel data file as well as the criteria sheet that must be attached to your report when submitted. The aim of this assessment task is to give you the opportunity to apply the data analysis skills that you are learning to some real life data. The topic this semester is superannuation. Your task sheet gives some background information. You may also wish to do some general background reading to gain a better understanding of superannuation within Australia. A Google search will very quickly provide some places to look for more info. In relation to the data you will be analysing, there are two sets of data. They can both be found in an Excel file available for download near the task sheet on Blackboard. The first data set, which is available in the worksheet called Current, contains detailed information relating to 467 superannuation options. This data has been sourced from selectingsuper.com.au and the data set includes fund name, segment, investment strategy, one year return and three year return. The second data set, which is available in the worksheet called Historical, contains historical superannuation information. The data has been sourced from apra.gov.au and the data set includes the figures for year and annual rate of return. As a research officer, you have been asked to summarise, analyse and interpret each of the data sets. The task sheet includes quite a specific list of tasks which must go into the report. A terminology worksheet has been included in the Excel file to help you become familiar with the various superannuation terms. If you are not familiar with any of the terminology used in this assessment item, we would highly recommend that you undertake some general reading on this topic. Most superannuation fund websites will have such information. As well, there are many online dictionaries which can be searched to define terms. There is also a strategies worksheet within the Excel file that has information to help with your understanding of the different investment options, including their risk classification. OK, so let's start by looking at the overall structure of the report which you will prepare. It is important that your report is structured as a business report and appropriately formatted. You should therefore include a title page. When you submit your report to Assignment Minder, you will need to complete an Assignment Minder cover sheet to attach to your folder. And so this will include more detail. As such, the title page only needs to include a report title and your name and student number, but feel free to be a bit creative with the title page. The table of contents goes after the title page. So in terms of the report itself, where do we start? Well, all good reports should have an introduction section, and so this is where we begin. The introduction is your opportunity to set the scene for the report, and so the first few sentences are likely to be in relation to the general topic, maybe some background information, followed by a sentence to explain why we are in interested in the topic and therefore what the objective of the report is. Please keep in mind that nowhere in the task sheet have you been asked to select the best superannuation fund, but rather your aim is to develop an understanding of superannuation performance, both historically and during the last year, what we might refer to as a review of the superannuation industry. The introduction should also include some specific details about the data you will be analysing, as well as a brief outline of the report structure that will follow. A concluding sentence is always a good way to finish off a section. Well, we might be then tempted to go straight into the full analysis, but there is one more issue that should be dealt with early and therefore can be included as a section straight after the introduction. It will only be a fairly small section of the report, but it is important. Before we do any analysis of data, we should consider the possibility of outliers. As we have seen during lectures, their presence can cause numerical measures to be distorted. The idea is therefore to consider the possibility of outliers before undertaking any of the other analysis, and an early section within the report is therefore logical so as to make clear that this analysis has been included, and therefore to clearly define the data set that will be used for the remainder of the report. In terms of calculations, you only need to consider the possibility of outliers for the one-year returns data. 
If you do find any outliers, you will need to think about whether to leave them in or remove them completely such that the whole row would then be deleted. In the report, your outlier section will begin with an intro sentence, basically introducing the idea of an outlier and explaining why they need to be considered. You can then state what data was tested for outliers and refer the reader of your report to an appendix with a summary of the calculations. State your findings and if you do find outliers you will need to finish the section by stating what was done with any outliers as well as the motivation behind the decision. In relation to the appendix, it can be fairly simple and I would recommend including an intro sentence maybe with the z-score formula and a statement of the outlier rule. It would then be useful to include a small table showing some example calculations of the z-scores. Having the outlier discussion out of the way, we can now go on to the specific tasks and a good place to begin is with the historical analysis. While ultimately is it is up to you to decide how to best order the tasks within the report. One structure idea would be to complete the historical review first so as to provide a lead into the current performance review. It is important to think about the overall structure of the report and how it follows logically. For the historical review section, the idea is to start with an introduction sentence or two to set the scene for this section. Then state the data being considered and you are ready to reference figure 1. You would include your chart of the historical data and then below it you can discuss the features as well as then linking those features to real life. Please keep in mind that the presentation of the data into a chart is therefore only the first part of this section. You have to be able to communicate the features as well as interpreting the data in relation to real life. Presenting the data is not sufficient for this report. Analysis and interpretation must also be included. Following the historical section, we can go on to the current performance section. You will need to initially consider the distribution of one-year returns in isolation, which is therefore one variable analysis. You will need to consider what factors may influence the one-year returns, but this will be completed within the following section. Again, start with an introduction sentence to introduce this component, followed by a description of the data. You then need to include a histo histogram to visually show the distribution of returns. Below you would note the key features. Generally a good summary of features will include things like the average, lowest value, highest value, variation and shape. It is also useful to note the modal class. The features then need to be put in context and linked to real life. A good concluding sentence for this section is to have a lead into the next section. For example, something like, in the next section of the report, factors which may influence the returns, such as investment strategy, will be examined. In terms of the bivariate and trivariate analysis, since this is a larger section with several subsections, it is nice to have a couple of sentences before the first subsection, something just to set the scene and refocus the reader. The same structure template can then be used for each of the subsections. For this component, you are also looking to say which factors influence the one-year returns, and so this type of comment can be a good concluding sentence in each subsection. Your final section will be a conclusion section. As conclusions should be drawn within each section and subsection of the report, the final conclusion section will only be fairly small and is really just an opportunity to quickly recap on the major findings so as to remind the reader what they should be taking away from the report. No recommendations are required. Finally, after the conclusion, you will include your appendix. I mentioned earlier that you would need an outlier appendix. Generally, this is the only appendix that should appear in your report, as anything important, including tables and charts, should appear within the report itself. If you do find that you have something extra that you want to 
include as an appendix, that is okay, but please keep in mind that the report should be able to be read without looking to any appendices, and so it is vital that all of the, your findings and conclusions go inside the report itself.